So here we have our velocity time graph. And what we want to kind of accomplish today is figure out some equations. We want to mathematically express the relationship between velocity, time, position, initial position, acceleration, all those things. We want to, we want to come up with some expressions that will kind of help us relate those variables. So what we have here is a constant change in velocity. Okay, so this is our velocity, this is our time. So as time increases, our velocity increases at a constant rate. We talked about how this particular uh, graph, a velocity time graph, this line is defined as the acceleration. So the slope of the line of a velocity time graph is the acceleration of that object. And since this is linear, we can write an expression for this. We can use that slope form equation that y equals mx plus b that we keep going back to. We can use that to write a mathematical expression for this line on our velocity time graph. Now we don't know any numbers and we don't really care. We, what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute in variables. We'll worry about numbers later on. So from this graph, when we talk about y, when we say y, what we're looking at is the value on the y-axis. So what if we come up to time one right here and we come over and we read this velocity, what we're actually looking at is the final velocity. So when we read this on a graph, our y is actually equal to our final velocity of our object at a given time because this is our x variable right here. So our final velocity is equal to whatever the slope of that line is, which in this case is our acceleration times whatever time it is. So our final velocity is equal to our acceleration times our time. Now, the b, remember b is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept tells us the velocity when the time equals zero. In this case, when time equals zero, our velocity equals zero, but it doesn't always have to be. We could have a line up here like this and this part is still true, but our y-intercept now is some other value other than zero. So our y-intercept, our b, is actually the value of our initial velocity. So this gives us a nice equation. Just the line of this graph right here gives us a nice equation that relates the final velocity to the acceleration, the time, and the initial velocity. So this is our first big equation. This is our first equation that we really want to keep track of. That final velocity is equal to the acceleration times the time plus the initial velocity. So this is a nice expression for just the line on our graph. Sometimes we are interested in the position of the object. So either the final position or the initial position, but a lot of times it's our final. So we can take this and we're going to rearrange this. We're going to do a little bit of manipulation with our numbers here. We know that if acceleration is constant, then the average velocity, if we take our average velocity, is equal to the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2. So this is on our graph here. So if we take our final velocity and we add our initial velocity, the average of that is going to be 2. Okay, we, can, we can figure that out. Now we also know from our constant velocity model that velocity is also equal to the final position minus the initial position divided by the time. So our change in position over time is also average velocity. So since both of these expressions are a way to express average velocity, we can set those two things equal to each other. So let's take this position. So we have our final position minus our initial position divided by our time is equal to our final velocity plus an initial velocity divided by two. So those two things are equal. In this case, what we really wanna solve for is final position. That's what we're gonna be interested in with this expression right here. So we want to get this final position by itself. And it's just a little bit of algebra. 
So to do that, we've got to move over our time. So we can divide by time on both sides. That leaves us with the final position minus the initial position equal to VF plus VI over two times time. And we can add our initial position on both sides. Okay, so that gives us an expression that we need to clean up a little bit. And fractions are just kind of inconvenient. So let's bring this one half out. Let's just say, if, if we divide this by two, basically what we're saying is we're talking about one half of this final velocity plus this initial velocity. So let's pull that out, shall we? So what we end up with is our final velocity, or our final position is equal to one half of the final velocity plus the initial velocity times the time plus our initial position. Okay, so that might not look much better. We have a lot of terms in here, and our goal here is to make something kind of simple that we can use. And we really want to have this change in position, this, or this final position, in terms of our acceleration. So what we know from up here is that our final velocity is equal to our acceleration times our time plus our initial velocity. So if we bring that expression and plug it in here for our final velocity, we're going to make this even more scary for a minute. So we have our final position is equal to one half of our acceleration times time plus initial velocity plus our initial velocity, all of that times time plus our initial position. Now these terms right here are just all added together. There's nothing multiplied in here. So we can combine these two initial velocities. So we would have one half of our acceleration times time plus two initial velocities times our time plus our initial position is equal to our final position. Okay, so now we have this time out here. We're gonna get rid of that as well. So we have our final position is equal to one half this times at, so time times at, is one half of at squared plus two initial velocity times time plus our initial position. Which we don't need, the, I guess we don't need those uh, parentheses. So let's rewrite this. So let's make this a little cleaner. So our final position is equal to one half of the acceleration times the time. This, oh, we do need that, uh, that uh, parenthesis. So this, we want to get rid of that. So one half of the acceleration times the time. One half times two is, is one. So we have plus our initial velocity times time plus our initial position. Okay, so this gives us an expression for our change in position. Now remember we can, if we bring this initial position over, we can subtract this initial position. Another way we could write this is as delta x. So if we bring this over with our position, we subtract our initial position, we're subtracting our initial position from our final position, which is delta x, that's our change in position, equals 1 half a t squared plus v i t. Okay. So this is actually another uh, really useful equation that we can use. So this gives us our change in position with respect to our time and our acceleration. And also if we know our initial velocity, which a lot of times this is zero. You know, a lot of times we start from rest. So many times we can ignore that. So that's our second equation. So we have this one from our graph and we used a little bit into this whole mess into a second one. So the problem with these two expressions is they both include time. And sometimes we don't know time. So sometimes we wanna kinda of maybe find acceleration or velocity or change in position and we don't know what our time is. So our next goal here is to derive an equation that doesn't include time. 
So we have these two equations here. So we have our delta x is equal to 1 half for acceleration times time plus our velocity initial times time. And up here, what we have is our final velocity is equal to acceleration times time plus our initial velocity. If we take this and solve for time, we can find time is equal to our final velocity minus our initial velocity over our acceleration. And what we can do is we can take this expression and plug it into here. We can sometimes use this equation. If we have a zero velocity, if we, have a, if we start from rest, this is when this is kind of useful, we can find time if we know if we know that our initial velocity is zero, we can ignore this term. So this isn't so bad. We could use this to find time if we know our acceleration and our change in position. But if we have an initial velocity, this becomes a quadratic equation. I think it's really super messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression for time from our initial acceleration equation. And we're going to plug in that expression for time anywhere that we find time in here. So we're going to get something that looks like this. So we have 1 half of our acceleration times our time squared. So this is our VF minus VI over A. We're going to square that plus initial velocity times our time VF minus VI over A. So what we're first going to do, let's, let's start here. This expression right here is squared. So what that means is we have to take this final minus initial velocity and square that whole term. So that looks like this. We have VF minus VI times VF minus VI. So that whole term is squared. Now this is just, it's a distributive, is that what this is? This is going to be, we're going to have um, final velocity squared minus Vf Vi minus Vf oops, Vi plus initial velocity squared. So that is going to go in here. So now we have delta x is equal to 1 half of acceleration times this whole thing vf squared minus 2vf vi plus vi squared over a, which is also squared, because that's in, inside that bracket as well. So this becomes this. And then we're going to add this term. So we're going to have vf vi minus initial velocity squared over A. Now over here we can simplify our acceleration. We have acceleration multiplied by the inverse of a squared acceleration, so we can get rid of that. That's kind of nice. Okay, so next thing we might want to be interested in is getting rid of this half. And to do that we have to take everything multiplied by 2. So we just multiply everything on here by 2. We have 2 delta x over here on this side. Okay, we multiply by 2 on this side, we have to multiply by 2 on this side. So we end up with vf squared minus 2vf vi plus vi squared over a plus, this is now times 2. Okay, so if we multiply this by 2, we have to multiply that by 2. So we have 2vf vi minus 2vi squared over a. This is nice that we have a in both of our denominators, so if we multiply everything by acceleration, we can take 2 delta x a equal to vf squared minus 2 vf vi plus vi squared plus 2 vf vi minus 2 vi squared. Okay. Now there's a lot of things that we can simplify here. 
we have two VFVI and two VFVI, one negative, one positive, so we can just ignore those. We also have VI squared minus two VI squared. So when we subtract those, we're gonna get a negative VI squared. So here's what we get with this. We get two times the acceleration times our change in position equal to our velocity final squared minus our velocity initial squared. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So we have this really nice equation. When we take these two things and we combine them and get rid of time, this is what we end up with. Now a lot of times what you will see is the velocity final squared is equal to 2a delta x plus initial velocity squared. So this is actually our third equation. So what we have is we have three expressions now that have to do with the acceleration of an object. So if we aren't interested or don't know change in position, but we know acceleration and time, okay? This one we have change in position, acceleration and time. And here we have change in position and acceleration and no time. Okay, so these are your three equations that will be very useful Okay, those are the three. You can pretty much figure out anything that you need to know with acceleration with these three equations. Now keep in mind that these are only four accelerating objects. Now think about that for a second because if we have, if we have this object up here that is not accelerating, our acceleration is zero. So you can use these for things that are not accelerating, but your acceleration is zero. So any term that has acceleration in it is gonna be zero. So this right here, actually, if we say that our acceleration is zero, this is our delta x equal to our initial velocity times our time. This was the equation that we got from our constant velocity lab. So these are really our four kinematics equations that are really, really useful. This is for constant. Okay, so you cannot use this. You cannot use this equation if you have acceleration. You can only use this if you have a constant velocity. But these three here are if you have an acceleration.